Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a closer look at the CA code, what we know as Core's Acquisition Code. Remember that it's only available on the channel L1. The frequency of the CA code is 1.023 megahertz, and the transmission is a transmission of about, no, not about, exactly 1,023 bits on each a transmission at a transmission rate of 1023 megabits per second which means that every millisecond a message is sent with 1023 bits. It is a PRN, what we, what we know as a pseudo random noise code. In other words, it looks like random noise but it actually isn't. It's a random noise in the sky so to speak. It's actually produced by what we call a known algorithm. The physical distance between the bits, now if you imagine that there's a bit sent every, about one every microsecond, then the distance covered in that small amount of time is about 293 meters. So the bits are about 293 meters apart and the whole message spans a distance of 293 kilometers. That is important because if you don't know exactly which message you received, message N or N plus 1 or N plus 2, you know that all messages are 293 kilometers apart from one another, which helps you get rid of the ambiguity of the message. Each 1 millisecond, 1,023 bits are sent, which is 2 to the 10 minus 1. There's a reason for that number, because it is using a particular technique, and we'll show you that in just a moment. The CA code contains time that it was transmitted every one millisecond, so therefore the 293 kilometer ambiguity. What we mean by that is the, what's encoded within the message is the time of transmission of the satellite. And that is of course a very accurate time because the satellite has those atomic clocks. So when it sends the message, it knows exactly what time it is. And that is embedded within that message. Each satellite has its own unique code or Core's Acquisition Code. What does that mean is that when we have the Core's Acquisition Codes coming from different satellites, we need to be able to tell which satellite it came from. And that's kind of an ingenious way of doing that, and therefore the code can be discerned. The way it's done, that each code, or each CA code, from each satellite is produced, and I should put a D there, is produced by combining two bit streams. And those two bit streams are combined based on what we call a 10-stage linear feedback system. What that means is we're taking two bit codes, we're combining them, but we're delaying one of them. So what's happening is one of the bit streams is delayed by an integer number of periods. And that number of periods, that code is unique to each satellite. So we have two bit streams combined, one is delayed, you then lay one on top of the, of the other, and of course at that point it looks like random noise. But then when the, when the receiver receives that bit code stream, it then starts shifting that back one unit at a time until the two match. When it then sees how many units apart it was, or what the delay was on the second bit stream compared to the first bit stream, it will then know what satellite it came from because each satellite will delay it a specific number of integer uh, periods. And from that we can know which satellite it came from and then we can decode the message. Once we know what satellite it came from, we can then say, okay, the time to that satellite was this. We then know the position of the satellite because we have informa information about the satellite. And then all we have to do is look at our own clock. Well, the receiver then looks at its own clock, takes the time difference, multiplies that times the speed of light, and then knows the distance to the satellite. In other words, the difference in time is the time of the satellite minus the time of the receiver. Again, as we saw before, the time of the satellite is really accurate, but the time of the receiver is not so accurate, and therefore there is a certain amount of uncertainty in that distance. Again, when we do that with four satellites, we can then use that fourth satellite to eliminate some of that ambiguity about the receiver time and get us closer into what we know as being the distance to the three satellites, and then, of course, the position of where the receiver is at. There's, of course, other techniques in which we can find a more accurate value for the position of the receiver, and of course that comes from the precision code, and we'll talk about that code later. But again, the way this particular CA code works on channel L1 is that it takes the two bit streams, combines them by delaying one of the two bit streams. It then looks like random noise, but it's called pseudo-random noise because there's a real message in there. 
Then when the receiver gets it, it starts shifting that back until it finds a perfect match. When there's a perfect match of the two, then it knows what the delay was. That delay tells it what satellite it came from. And then we can find out the distance of the satellite by taking the time that's encoded within the message to the position of the satellite, since we now know which satellite it is and what the time of the satellite was when we received the message. Subtract the time difference from our own time, and then we know the exact position we're at, at least close to the exact position where we're at. And that's how CA code works.